Hey guys, I'm Siobhan, a fourth year medical resident. I just got to the hospital and I'm starting a night shift in the ICU with the most critically ill patients in the hospital. Hey, Lisa. Hey, how are you? Good, I'm so happy we're on call together. I know, so excited. Um, so there's been three admissions to the unit since the start of the day. Okay, so now that I've got handover on all the patients, I have a sense of who's sick, who do I have to watch out for tonight. One of those patients um, has been bleeding from her esophagus um, and it's related to end-stage liver disease. And she's scheduled to get a TIPS procedure tonight as sort of a last ditch effort, last effort to stop this bleeding. Now, it's a procedure we don't see very often, so if there's time, I'm hoping to go and take a look. I'll tell you more about that later. But first, let's go get a call room. Very good. Okay, so now let's head to the radiology department where the TIPS procedure is taking place. The TIPS procedure. So that stands for transjugular intrahepatic portal systemic shunt and is used to treat portal hypertension caused by liver cirrhosis. Okay, so let me break that down and explain it. Damage to the liver leads to the formation of scar tissue. As the liver fills with scar tissue, there's more resistance to blood flow through the liver. This causes high blood pressure in the portal vein that brings blood from the intestines to the liver, which is called portal hypertension, high blood pressure of the portal vein. This then causes more blood to flow into small veins of the stomach and esophagus. And these small veins were not designed to withstand high pressures. So they can easily burst and even cause life-threatening blood loss. We treat patients first with medications and we'll even try to seal off broken blood vessels to prevent bleeding. But if that doesn't work, like in the case of this patient, we can do a TIPS procedure. So the goal is to create a new pathway for some of the blood to bypass the damaged liver. Take a look at this CT scan. You can see the white stent that was placed to connect the portal vein to the hepatic vein as a way to avoid the damaged liver. The procedure took about four hours and the patient did really well. Now we're transferring them back to the ICU, which is surprisingly challenging. It actually took three of us to push all the equipment without tangling any of the important tubes to the ventilator and IV poles. Now it's a waiting game to see if the procedure was a success. I see you're hard at work. Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, most important priority is we've got to think about food for tonight. Did you bring food? I didn't bring food. I've you're heard there's food? a poke bowl place. But oh, that sounds good. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, I haven't ordered there, but we can, oh. we can always do it. Okay. As long as it doesn't get too busy. <laughs> I know. Um, I have a page. How about you order then? Yeah, that okay. sounds good. I'll order. We'll do that. Divide and conquer. Awesome. Love Perfect. It. Okay. <laughs> the food is here, but I think we should round first. I think we you should. You too hungry? No, you can do it. <laughs> okay, let's round see how the patients are doing, then we can feel comfortable eating. Like it. During evening rounds, we go from room to room, reviewing blood work and imaging from the day. The bra temp is 38.6. I need a culture under on days today. Yeah. And we always discuss any concerns from the bedside nurse. How are things going over here? I'm um, good. He had some Lasix today, and I noticed the magnesium and potassium are still low. Okay. It's he, he's intubated, right? So probably IV is better. Yes. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, we'll replace that tonight then. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, done with the first floor of the ICU and now we're heading up for the second. These are the most critically ill patients in the hospital and their condition can change rapidly, which is why there's one nurse assigned to each patient, allowing for very close monitoring. Delicious. So I haven't seen you, like when was the last time? Has it been almost a year? I think it's been a year. Yeah, because it was respirology, right? Last time? It was respirology. That was literally November of 2019. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a long time. How have you been? What's what's going on with you? How are you coping with everything? Things are good. I mean, it's been busy for everyone during this time, but nothing hugely new. Got my second shot yesterday. <laughs> 
second yes. vaccine. Oh, I'm so jealous. I'm still waiting for mine. So I'm like, I'm so happy you've got yours. That's amazing. Yeah. How, how are you feeling? I feel okay. Yeah, there's no, you know, massive side effects or symptoms that I felt after. I had a bit of a headache this morning, took a towel on. I'm feeling fine. And she's here on call. Here on call. That, <laughs> now that's amazing. I heard a lot of people, you know, you know, you just, you just don't know how you're going to feel, wanting to, yes. to make sure, but that's, that's, Fantastic. Did your did you did yours get stretched out between the first dose and the second dose? Oh, uh, oh yeah. Okay, tell me after. <laughs> yeah, we have star one. Oh shoot. Okay, okay. Go. let's go. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so that was a merge. It sounds like there's a young male uh, that came in, seems septic, appears unwell, heart rates up, blood pressure's down. Just wonder if you can see uh, for possible admission to ICU. Sounds very reasonable. All right, should we go up and see him? Yeah, I think we should. Walking into the emergency department, we see nurses rushing into the resuscitation room, and we can see the emergency physician intubating the patient we were about to see. After being connected to life support, we go to examine him. I see a young man lying unconscious in bed. I can clearly see track marks on his arms, and I suspect that he's been using IV drugs. Listening to his heart, I hear a loud murmur. And Elisa tells me that there's no record of him having a heart murmur. Putting the whole picture together, we've got a young man who looks like he does IV drugs, with a high fever, a high white blood cell count, and a new heart murmur. It really looks like this is shaping up to be infective endocarditis an infection of the heart, which can happen when bacteria is introduced into the bloodstream after a needle is used without properly cleaning the skin, or if it's a dirty needle. Okay, so we've got a plan. We're gonna be moving the patient down to the ICU. Um, we're continuing IV fluids, giving antibiotics. We're gonna be monitoring um, urine output every hour to make sure he's not getting dehydrated. Um, and then repeating blood work, doing cultures, uh, trying to get to the bottom of what's causing this. Although at this point, after everything we know, um, I'm pretty sure this is going to end up being infective endocarditis, but we won't be able to confirm that until we can get an echocardiogram, an ultrasound of the heart tomorrow morning. Okay, so I just checked on that septic patient again, and despite getting a lot of fluids, his blood pressure is still low. So at this point, you think of it like we filled up the tank and now we actually just need to create some extra squeeze to the blood vessels. So we're gonna start a special medication that helps squeeze your blood vessels called norepinephrine. Okay, so I just went around to check on all the patients again. And yeah, I mean, patients are doing well. The patient with a TIPS procedure isn't bleeding anymore. Um, our septic patient's blood pressure is a bit better at this point. Um, so I think that uh, I'm actually just gonna try to get a little bit of a nap. It almost feels too lucky and early to be doing that, but fingers crossed, this is pretty nice. <laughs> Can you hear that? It sounds like someone's drilling. Good morning. I cannot believe that I wasn't called back to the ICU or to the emergency department. That, that just never happens. I was actually waking up every 30 minutes sort of checking my phone and making sure I wasn't missing anything. Um, and Elisa has the pager, so we'll find out from her if she had to deal with a lot of pages overnight. Um, but I assumed she would have called me if that was the case. Um, anyway, unexpected amount of sleep. It's quite nice. All right, let's go in, uh, to the ICU. We'll give hand over to the morning team and tell them about all the new patients. Okay, so did I, did I miss some pages? Like, did you get some no. sleep? Yeah, it was a quiet night, so didn't miss anything. Wow, okay, you're my good luck charm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not no black cloud anymore. <laughs> Well, what a great night. I couldn't have planned it better. You got a busy evening and then a quiet night. It was perfect. Anyway, so if you want to see more videos like this, then be sure to subscribe. So that way I'll see you in the next video. So bye for now.